Today on the newscast, Iran vows to push the United States out of the Middle East for good, while Hezbollah unleashes a show of force at Israel's northern doorstep. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast, a very busy news weekend in the world's most volatile and strategic region, the Middle East. We're going to break down what Iran and Hezbollah not only are saying, but what they are up to on the ground. But up first, a quick rewind that is very relevant for this breaking news from over the weekend. It has been nearly three and a half years since the United States eliminated top Iranian terror master Qasem Soleimani in a drone strike ordered by then President Trump. That was January 2020, folks, and yet the Iranian regime is still pining for revenge against the United States for it, and over the weekend threatened a, quote, final blow against the U.S., plus Hezbollah holding major military drills at Israel's doorstep. We're going to break it down in a minute. Before I do, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Folks, you do not want to miss any of our daily commentaries right here on the Watchman News channel. Things are happening at such a rapid clip in the Middle East, and it will all affect you no matter where you live. And we're not only covering the Middle East and all things Israel here on the newscast, but also China, Russia, Latin America, things unfolding here in the United States, the Great Reset, and much more. So be sure to keep it right here on the Watchman News channel and join us as subscribers. Okay, let's get into it. Iran, a top Iranian military commander, actually he is the head of Iran's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, or IRGC for short. His name is Hossein Salami. Yes, his last name is really Salami, but he made remarks on Friday that were a bit of an eye-opener. They should have been, at least, for the Biden administration in particular, given their continue, continued efforts to try to revive the Iran nuclear deal. Now, Salami said that the goal of the Iranian regime is to push the U.S. out of the Middle East entirely, completely. He talked again about Qasem Soleimani, that Iranian terror master, the not-so-dearly-departed Iranian terror master who was eliminated in January 2020. And Salami said, we are still seeking revenge against the United States for Soleimani's death, and we will get our revenge, and we will deal the U.S. a final blow, his words, and that final blow seems to be the complete expulsion from the Middle East of U.S. forces, according to Salami. And folks, look, he's clearly taking, and his regime, the Iranian regime, they are clearly taking active steps to make that threat a reality, as we have reported many times here on the newscast. The Iranian regime now, since Joe Biden took office in January 2021, has carried out close to, or at least, 80 attacks against U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. Now, these usually come, sometimes it's rockets fired by Iranian proxies in those countries, in particular Syria, where, remember, there's about 900 U.S. troops still stationed right now, and you have about 2,000 U.S. soldiers still in Iraq. But these attacks against U.S. bases chiefly come in the form of rockets fired by Iranian proxies, but increasingly, in the past year or so, there are drone attacks being carried out against these U.S. bases. Now, we had one last month in which a U.S. citizen was killed. A U.S. contractor working at a base in Syria and at least six U.S. soldiers were wounded. And the Iranian regime's fingerprints are all over these attacks. At times, the Iranian regime directly is launching these drones 80 times, folks, at least 80 times this has happened in the past two and a half years. And the U.S. has responded exactly three times. Three out of 80 incidents the U.S. has seen fit to respond uh, under President Biden. And these usually have come in forms of airstrikes along the Iraq-Syria border, which clearly have not been enough to deter the Iranian regime. Look, and you can see it again from Hossein Salami's comments on Friday, Folks, they are emboldened right now. They smell weakness in the White House. 
and they are going to continue to push. We've got those 80 attacks. We've got plots that we've reported on here in the newscast over the past year. Iranian plots confirmed, by the way, by the Biden administration that Iran has been seeking to assassinate former U.S. officials on U.S. soil. The list goes on and on and these constant threats as well. And yet, look, the Biden administration still reportedly through back channels is trying to revive that Iran nuclear deal, even though Iran is cracking the skulls, quite frankly, I'm sad to say, of Iranian citizens in the streets of Iran right now who are protesting against this wicked regime, even though Iran is supplying Russia with hundreds, if not thousands of drones that it's using in Ukraine. The list goes on and on. And yet the Biden administration is still very eager to revive at least that Iran nuclear deal, at least in some form, maybe a smaller form, but they want to revive that deal, folks. And you wonder why the Iranian regime is so emboldened and making these fierce statements and threats against the United States. 80 attacks, three responses. You do the math, and clearly the Iranian regime is doing the math as well. Hey, before we go, Iran's most lethal proxy, of course, is Hezbollah, perched on Israel's doorstep in southern Lebanon. Well, yesterday, uh, Sunday, May 21st, Hezbollah held some pretty major military drills in which they showed off their military hardware uh, and made threats towards Israel. And the interesting thing about this, folks, was that Hezbollah, in a very rare move, invited media reporters to attend these drills in southern Lebanon. Surprise, surprise, the watchman did not receive an invite from Hezbollah, but nonetheless, there were a good deal of media members there recording all of the goings on. And again, Hezbollah number one, showing off their military hardware, which in some cases is pretty advanced. And number two, surprise, surprise, making threats towards Israel. Now, one of the major statements to come out uh, of this military exercise by Hezbollah yesterday, a top Hezbollah official said, hey, we didn't show all of our military hardware. We also have precision guided missiles that we will unveil in a future conflict. Now, if you watch the newscast on a regular basis, folks, you know precision guided missiles, PGMs for short, are an absolute red line for Israel. They are the main reason that Israel has conducted hundreds of airstrikes in Syria over the past few years, looking to uh, eliminate these PGM weapons shipments. Look, Iran uses Syria as a transit point to send PGM weapons parts through into the hands of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Again, Syria is a hub. Syria is a transit point for that, hence the airstrikes. Hezbollah commemorates what it calls its Liberation Day. That's coming up on May 25th, Thursday of this week. That marks when Israeli forces withdrew from southern Lebanon 23 years ago. So Hezbollah is certainly crowing about that as well. And also this show of force by this terror outfit comes on the heels of number one, Jerusalem Day uh, last week in Israel. Obviously a big event, which we covered here in the newscast. By the way, if you miss any of our newscasts, just check it out right here in our archives under newscasts on the homepage and subscribe while you're there, of course. But Jerusalem Day and also the conflict between Israel and Palestinian Islamic Jihad two weeks ago as well, a five-day conflict there. Folks, remember, Hezbollah now is hosting Hamas and other Palestinian terror groups on Lebanese soil. They launched almost three dozen rockets against Israel in one instance last month. So although Hezbollah and Israel have not gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in any sort of major military confrontation in 17 years. The last time was July 2006. Hezbollah has certainly been quite active still in planning and building up their forces, as was on full display yesterday, and encouraging others to carry out terror as well. Folks, I believe the end game here is what we've called the Great Northern War here on the newscast, where Israel will eventually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hezbollah and Iran, in Lebanon and Syria. Of course, the Iranian ring of fire will ignite that surrounds Israel on all sides. Hamas will throw its hat in the ring, as will Islamic Jihad in Gaza, perhaps the Houthis in Yemen to the south, those various Shia militias in Iraq and Syria, 
that day is coming. The good news is, number one, Israel is preparing for that day. I've been, I've attended live fire drills with the Israel Defense Forces. We've reported from them uh, for the watch, uh, for the Watchman newscast and the Watchman TV show on TBN. So Israel prepared, but more importantly, much more importantly, as we go, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, neither slumbers nor sleeps. And that's the ultimate encouragement as we close today. Hey, be sure to check out our new Watchmen shop by popular demand. We've now got some Watchmen merch. We've got some hats, t-shirts, mugs, just in time for summer. It's a cool way to support the channel and keep us going here. This is a pretty large YouTube channel, of course, over 607,000 subscribers. And we've got an international TV show on TBN as well. It's not free, unfortunately, so... It's always great to have your support, and we thought the Watchman Shot would be a cool way for you to show your support for the show. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload, and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.